this is my shot. Like, every, you know, if, if, you're, if you're at a yeah, in yeah. the cusp of like a big growth phase and you get like, it's almost it's like, like an athlete training up, for the yeah. Olympics, right? If you screw it up, you're gone. I, I would love at some point to pick it up, all of it, and put it in different places. But okay, we'll take you to Riyadh. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>yeah and and the city was um full of opportunity everywhere and you know i'm a chef uh by trade by training, yeah. um, i came from a fine dining background um i was working uh in dubai uh, and abu dhabi actually for a um a, you know a fairly prominent cafe and, and deli uh, australian uh, brand and sort of figured out that you know they were doing a great job but there was there was way more that could be done um and I thought that there was an opportunity to do something quite special, quite different, and quite focused. It was very different. I mean, you can't yeah. underestimate that. Yeah. That look and doing it in Sheikh Zayed. Yeah. In a part of the city where really there was no restaurant. Yeah. Well, the, the, so the, the whole point from the beginning was to do something that nobody else was doing. Yeah, that the was, double decker. Yeah. Well, it was to serve breakfast only. Yes. And, yes. and light lunch, but yeah. close at four o'clock. Yeah. yeah. So just that one focus on a USP just totally turned heads 
So, um, yeah, we were really busy from day one. And were you in the kitchen? Yeah, I, w I, w I was cooking. I was So um, you were cooking and then, you, menus, then yeah. your partner was the business guy. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. The way we sort of split it up is I would do anything that the customer would see. Okay. Whether that be online or, um, you know, in the venue, whether the front of house, back of house, um, you know, the branding, all that kind of thing. Uh, and he would do all of the things that were uh, non-customer focused, more the, uh, you know, the business side of things. So you were a chef or you had worked in kitchens and you had that experience, but you had no business experience, right? Yeah. So you've learned on the yeah, go, essentially. Yeah, yeah it was funny. I, I, like, <laughs> as a chef, you, you just don't really no, you don't. think about the business side of, of things at all. You don't. Um, even going all the way back to culinary school, um, you know, we barely learned how to do a recipe costing. Yeah. So, um, you know, when I'd worked through the uh, that that restaurant company in in Dubai as my first job there, and then went out to to open Tom and Serge. Yeah, it had to change my thinking. Being a good chef does yeah. not mean you're a good business person. Yeah. And we've seen it time yeah. and time again. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a big challenge. And um, for all chefs, um, I'd encourage them to, you know, try as hard as they can to get into the business side of things more because it, it, it opens doors for you and it can really create your future. Just cooking is not probably enough. Did you know that you wanted to kind of be more, and I'm not belittling chefs in any way, but more than a chef, like you wanted to have your own business, your own brand, your own imprint, essentially? Yeah. Um, so when I was a kid, I was pretty good at economics and, and I had a good interest in economics at high school. And, um, you know, I, I liked the idea of, of running a business. Uh, and I, I, I guess I, I, I always had a plan that I wanted to open multiple brands. Um, so that was sort of part of the thinking from, from early on. And the love of food came from where? My, my mother is a fantastic cook. My okay. grandmother was a fantastic cook. But honestly- But not I, like, professionally. They weren't professional cooks. No, 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 not okay. at all. They no, just were good just cooks. Fantastic good cooks at home. Um, you know, I was quite creative as well as a kid, uh, quite artistic. So mm. the economic side and, and the artistic side, um, you know, building a restaurant is both of those things. 100%. And I found that you know, I loved, I'm a very visual person as well. And I love, I love design. I love art. I love to see pretty things in on plates, you know, and, and it's a real creative outlet to build a restaurant. So then Tom and Serge opened with a big bang, obviously was very, very popular almost yeah. right away. Yeah. And then walk us from there. Then what happened? <laughs> yeah. Tom and Serge was crazy. It, it was, um, you know, we opened in the industrial area in yeah. the middle of Al Coos. Yeah. Um, not so industrial it, now at the time. Yeah, it was like crazy uh, industrial. Yeah, it was just dust I mean, and construction, now, construction like, around you. No, know? it's like so docile in comparison. Yeah, well, it's 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 become a real a real hub, a, yeah. real, a real cool creative hub. There's great cafes and restaurants in there. But in the beginning, yeah, we were sort of the only place in that area. And um, after, I think it was like the third or the fourth weekend, just like massive lines at the door, you know? So it, it, it was shocking. Um, but also we knew it would happen, you know, yeah. like it wasn't. You tapped into. Yeah, uh, I think we, we, we had understood that, that there was a huge captive audience in Dubai that wanted something that was slightly different, um, something alternative to, you know, the cookie cutter brands that were in shopping malls. And, you know, it was away from the glitzy, glamorous type of places. And yeah, it just worked. So it, 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 it helped us springboard, you know, a, a massive future. Some of the brands you have today, beyond Tom and Serge, obviously you have Common Ground, you have some of us. We're going to talk about the guild. We're going to talk about by the this club. Um, but did you know, like, was this, was there a plan there and saying from day one, all right, let me see if this is working. Okay, it's working. Great concept. Now let me go on and go into cafes, bakery, licensed venues. Yeah. W was that a plan? It, it was a plan to create multiple, multiple types of, of, of business, M multiple types of concepts. And the logic being? Logic being that... Um, I didn't want, so if I opened another Tom and Serge in another area of Dubai, I was worried that they would compete against it each other. It loses its cachet. Um, exactly. Um, I wanted it to stay unique. Yes. And I still think that way to this day. I yeah. would never open another one Just, in this city or at least this country, I, I, I think. Um, we get offers all the time, yeah, sure. but it, 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 it just hasn't happened. Yeah. I just don't yeah. want to, I just don't want to ruin whatever, what, what magic is, is in yeah. there right now, yeah. you know, and it's been there for 10 years. Yeah. It's amazing. So, yeah. So you tapped into this by starting other concepts Yeah. and what came after Tom and Serge? So, so Tom and Serge, um, was doing very well and we were getting, uh, approached all over the city. 
Um, so that was actually where I met my my partners, my business partners, um, Abdul Wahid and Fahad, and um, Emiratis. Was, yeah, Emiratis, um, two amazing guys that um, you know almost like brothers to me now. And without them, I, I you know I, I wouldn't have gotten the opportunities that that yeah, came. Somebody after has that. to fund this. Yeah, of course. So um, you know um, we had an opportunity in the um, Burj Al Salam Tower, um, where the Sheraton Grand Hotel is. Yes. To take a big space on the ground floor, and you know, me being me, I, I wanted to try and you know control the whole process from start to finish of um, what we were serving. So that means roasting our own coffee, baking our own bread, having our own pastries, you know, all these kinds of things were really important to me. Um, so we had a space where we could build a coffee roastery and a bakery and a big cafe. So the sum of us was born. And that was also, again, very innovative at the time. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there wasn't many places where you go and you get the smell of coffee and yeah. that kind of yeah. freshly brewed coffee, baked yeah. bread, all of that. Um, and then Common Grounds came after. Yeah. And that seems to me one of the brands where you're more comfortable kind of plugging in in a lot of different places. Yeah. So we sort of built Common Grounds with the intention of having a clear purpose to suit a community of people that would be like, you know, in a mall, for example, yeah. which is a big mix, but it's not a destination. It's more of a stop by, yes. get something quickly and get out of there. Yes. So what does that mean? Focus on health, great coffee, yes. um, you know, affordable pricing. Yeah. but great quality yeah. and focus on daily routine. Yeah. So that's like one of my biggest things about all the brands is they must have daily routine usability. Explain so, that a bit more. So the idea is that um, building a concept with purpose means that you have to drive traffic in there or people in there where they don't even realize that it's really become part of their day. I see. So all of my venues, that's if you look at Tom and Serge or some of us or Common Grounds or Harvest & Co or Encounter Coffee, the idea is that we try to make sure that we set up everything where you can feel comfortable coming very, very regularly, two to three to four times a week. Mm. So that's the idea. So whenever I make decisions, I always think, what is the customer going to do when they come in the next day or the next day or the next day? So that starts you thinking about menu variety and, you know, uh, is, is, it, is it health uh, conscious? Am I thinking about what their diet is like? All these kind of their, their workout plan, you know, all these kinds of things. So actually all the brands can form part of people's daily routine, no matter where they are in the city, they can sort of go past one of our brands and, 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 and use it as if they would um, another one of the venues. And when you're at the outset of building a new brand, walk us through the process. So here's a white sheet, there's a white canvas. What happens? Are you involved in all the stages of yeah. conceptualization, menu, design, da, 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 da? Or do you come up with a big one big idea and you have an army of people and be like, guys, go bang it out? In the beginning, I used to use agencies, okay. um, use some fantastic agencies. So maybe the first, uh, Tom and Serge, we, 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 um, we, we used an agency to, to help us um, do the Flesh basic the, ba the, bla the basic design, but it ended up, you know, canceling a lot of it actually and just going with you know what i really thought was with right your gut. i wasn't then really able to articulate exactly what i wanted uh in terms of a brand i've gotten much better at that now but i've realized that it becomes much easier if you have your own team yeah that know 100%. you and know what you want and that's also where the ip is right because yeah. then you yeah. can hone the ip in yeah. very different ways go back and forth yeah an agency will just yeah only go so far exactly so yeah so the you know um the first few brands um we we use agencies but then um yeah we bought it all in-house so um we've created probably the last six or seven brands all in-house ourselves um with a great team marketing team um incredibly creative young people that just get the city and we have fun you know, that's the best thing about it is we, we, we really, it's one of the best parts of the job is creating something brand early new. Creative. You see, that seems to excite you. Yeah, it's, it's, it is, um, it is the best. I, I think it's one of the best parts of the job. Yeah. Yeah. Just getting to create something from scratch. Do you have a, a giant ops team that manages the day-to-day -day operations? I mean, that's a gigantic operation. Yeah. And every one of these venues has its own thing. I know this from yeah. my own venues, and I have five of them, not, yeah. <laughs> not 21. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now we have um, around 750 staff now, um, all up across the, across all the venues. Um, yeah, we have we have multiple layers of, 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 of managers. and Is there one director of ops that oversees everything? Yeah, it's me, actually. At it's the you. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I'm very, very hands-on um, with, On the with side. All, all the ops sides. Um, and yeah. you like that? I, I, it's... Like, are you director of ops by design or...? Um, 
we, or because we've, you're we've a been, we've control been through, freak. We've been through um, a, a few, few people that, yeah. are, that have been on the upside. Yeah. Um, it's a very, very, very demanding job. Yeah. It is a 24-7 job and it is very stressful. Yeah, and, um, and, and, and it doesn't stop. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm yeah. not the director of Ops, thankfully, yeah. but like Natasha was saying, and, I, and I, I think you'll relate to this, she showed me. You see the notes on my phone? You'll laugh. <laughs> this is just from a few store visits yesterday. Oh my God. Okay. And one of them, you're going to laugh at the level of detail. I went into the toilets at Flamingo Room and the toilet paper roll was not on the toilet. Oh no, I, that's a pet peeve of mine. In the right way. And I've put you training for toilet cleaners on toilet paper. <laughs> that's the only way. And that's why. It, you've is been, it the only way? I feel so. I, it's with the restaurant I, business. I do for longevity. So if you think about how long you've been here, seven yeah. years. Yeah. Because of the detail. Yeah. Now we get information so quickly and a lot of details. So if your restaurant is not up to standard, people are going to notice. Immediately. And, and what? they notice the detail. Do you do that? You're going around and yeah. be like, quite quote to self, quite lights. literally, yeah, yeah, quite literally, quite, quite literally. literally, yeah. It's um, F and B is always changing. Yeah. There are always different demands and requirements from it, whether it be creativity, writing new menus, marketing, finance, hitting budgets. You know how you're going to hit a budget. You know, yeah. or like yeah. just thinking about how you're going to hit a budget. There might be a hundred decisions that need to be. Main place yeah. to hit a certain budget just for one venue. Yeah. So correct. Let alone twenty one. And venues. if it's urgent, and you know that you have you know a certain issue, and you, you know you're you behind on something, go. it has to be now, now, now. Yeah. So that attitude um, uh, is the nature of the beast. And so, consumer taste change. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it's not like you have Tom and yeah. Serge, great yeah. guys. It's a success. Yeah. yeah. Now I can step away. Yeah. Tom and Serge might need to change because the people on the coast change and they have different tastes or because yeah. you now have to build a terrace like you were saying yeah. in one yeah, of your yeah. locations yeah. and all of that. Yeah. So, so it's also the locations yeah. are changing. Yeah, but I, I'll, I'll clarify though. Like I, I think during a growth phase, it's much harder. Correct. You know, last year at one point, we had 10 sites under construction at one time, which was quite crazy. So you doubled uh, your footprint in one year. Uh, yeah, actually, actually we did. Yeah, some big locations as well. The Guild, obviously, yeah. uh, ICD Brookfield Place, which yeah. is my biggest new restaurant. Yeah, we'll Byron talk Bay about Club. this in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Byron Bay's Club, uh, the Park and JLT. You know, we built that building uh, with um, with uh, DMCC. This uh, the support, and um, we uh, yeah we, we, we it was it was a crazy. So year. walk so, us through this last year. Like, what's a typical day? The typical day is me getting in my car very early, <laughs> um, getting on the phone to my senior team. So I have a senior team of people that wouldn't even say below me. We're we're all yeah, yeah, we're, sure. all, we're all working partners, together partners, to, yeah. to to make this to make this work. Um, we get on the phone. We have we have we have calls. Uh, we discuss the priorities for the day, um, most of the day, because everything's now now now. Um, <laughs> you know, when when you when you've got all these places under construction at one time, it's it's quite hard to plan ahead, knowing that there can be many complications. Yeah, with every design, day construction. Legal contractors, uh, contract, this, a, a, all of these DIY, things, that, Any, anything water. can hold you back. Yeah, yeah. Which then changes, and you have timelines, and you have budgets, right? Changes, your, yeah, it changes your schedule. So it's sort of you have to be able to adapt to that. Okay. So to get back to the question, my day is get in the car and go, and you have to figure it out. You know, do like, you do you bop from one venue to the other? Typically, yeah, yeah of course, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, um, so you don't go to an office. Yeah. Much. Uh, I, I I do we have a great office. I, I you know, I have we have um a team of about thirty people in the office. But then, you know, the marketing team, like they will not be there. They'll be out at all the venues. Yeah. Um the ops team, they'll be out at all the venues. So um it's um it's it's quite the operation. But as I said, it's it's almost thrilling at the same time. Yeah, you, you must know. get something out of it. I, I I love the idea of knowing that we're um we're we're giving something back to the community by building venues that are purposeful. 100%. That people are going to use. That's a cool idea. Yeah. So it all feels like it's worthwhile knowing that. So so no matter what the stress is, you know, how fast you have to be, how dynamic that you have to be during that day, it's it 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 feel it's quite it's quite a thrill. <laughs> I, yeah. You laugh. Yeah. Yeah. It's a thrill. Yeah. Uh what about yeah. fear of failure? Like you're doing 10 venues, you not wake up and be like, holy cow, like what if eight of those tank? Like I think that sometimes. I mean, I wake yeah. up and be like, I, I have a healthy risk appetite, 
But then there are days when I wake up, and I'm like, oh, it's all going to go to shit. Yeah. yeah. Like you have that feeling yeah. or <laughs> you just uh, power through I, it? I, I think, I think, yeah, I've, of course you have that feeling. Okay. I, I, think I don't it'd, know. It'd be impossible not to have that feeling. Yeah. But it makes it easier when you know that you have certain boxes ticked. Okay. So like it's a restaurant business. It's yeah. like, it's, it's money. Yeah. Funding. Do, do, do you have the biggest thing for me? Do you have the right lease? Yes. Do you have the right lease? Okay. Lease is good. All right. Good. Okay. Let's, we can sleep tonight knowing that we have the right lease. We we have the right terms. We know we're being ripped off. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. You know, secondly, you know, if you're building something, do you have a a reliable contractor that's not going to cost you money by having major delays? Yeah. Because that's where it really costs you a lot of money is is the delays. But almost all of them wind up costing you money with delays. I mean, it's yeah. almost impossible. But, but, but then you have to go back and deal with cash flow. And yeah. what's the revenue that's right. doing? How much money am I getting from here? Yeah. Like so all of these things have to um have to come about. But the most important thing is 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 getting the right advice. So, you know, I would never choose a location without my partners. Mm. Um, I would never sign a lease without my partners. We, we, it's, it's, we, we do it together. Mm. Um, and we're pretty informed. Like we know what the city needs. Yeah, you do. If you build something yourself, it's tailor-made for what, you, for what that area needs. Like that's one of the other reasons why we have so many brands is because like reason why we chose, you know, a Southeast Asian in, in, in the park in JLT and, and a pizzeria on the rooftop. Yeah, you'll and, feel there's an audience cause, for cause, it. Because we know that, you know, that, that comes in at the right price point. It's good daily routine food. You can eat it midweek without feeling like you've had too much, um, you know, too much, you know, calories, you know, these kinds. So like everything we do is sort of, there's a, there's a reason, you know, but generally speaking, yeah, ma- managing, managing the risk is, is difficult, but it's, it's just part of the job. You can listen to my full conversation with Tasha's founder, Natasha Sideris, in your podcast app or on our website at thelighthouse.ee slash podcast. You'll find the link in our show notes. When we come back, I talk to Tom about the learnings behind the failures and the lifestyle changes he's made to make all of this possible. That's right after this short break. Welcome back. You're listening to the Lighthouse Conversations with my guest, Tom Arnell. If something doesn't go well, so D- Danny Meyer, like in one of his podcasts, was talking about that he learned over time. At the beginning, when a concept or a, a location wouldn't work, he would feel like a failure. And he learned that actually the winning card for him is if something is not working, to close it quickly and move on. And he said it took him, I mean, he famously did his first restaurant and then the second one after 10 years. So we had, you know, with Union Square Cafe, 10 years of learning. He was very young, 27. Anyway, what's your philosophy on this? So invariably, when you're in 20 plus venues, some things may not work. Are you the stubborn type like me? Or are you going to be like, this is not working, shut down, move on, next thing? Yeah. So many factors to come into play there, though. Yeah, like his his lease might have been coming up. Yeah, yeah, easy, easy decision. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, let's so, assume so, not. So, I mean, let's yeah. assume just. So, like, so um, are you uh, able to make that decision? What's your personality like in that sense? If something's really not working, it's like throw the kitchen sink at it, and you throw the kitchen yeah, sink. Yeah, okay. just pound it. Yeah, marketing, menu engineering. Let's say it still know, doesn't work. Staff, upselling, St- it still doesn't work. Yeah, well, you know, I've, I've. Some of my best learning experiences came out of my failures, without yeah. doubt. Okay. So, so you agree with that idea? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like you know, I had a, a pub called Brunswick. Yeah, I you remember know, exactly, exactly. Was, I was alluding to that. Yeah, looked looked great. You know, it looked busy, but wasn't making money. Yeah, rent, and, rent and, was too high. And and know. the interesting thing with the Brunswick is, I remember thinking, well, and I didn't speak to you at the time, but in my head, being like. Well, probably the learning lesson for him is going to be like, let me stick with kind of daytime venues. Yeah. That's what I know. But you didn't. Yeah. And you went full on yeah. Yeah. into licensed evening. Yeah. So, I mean, frankly, that's yeah. a lot of balls. Great concept, wrong location. Okay. But it didn't but, dissuade you from going into evening and licensed. Well, no, it, it taught me lessons. Yeah. It taught me lessons yeah. about what to what to try Avoid. to sell to people. Yeah. Like in terms of, and what the, like, as I keep going back to like purpose and daily routine. There's only so much Heineken that can fit into your daily routine and fill a purpose to someone's life. Yes. You know, the market is sort of pegged to this two for one deal, happy hour thing. So yes. you can't pay your bills on that. Yes. So you Correct. have to, it has to be, you know, what I learned, go back to food, make the food really bloody mm, good. Central. That's the most important thing. Make the food good. Never rely on the booze. Mm, that's you know? interesting. Um, that's the first thing. Um, yeah. And then secondly, just make sure that you're, you're, you're building a venue that is going to be 
filled and that's with in purpose. fact what you did with all the other licensed locations. Yeah. I mean, I've noticed that it's much more central to food and design versus to your point earlier, like a pub. Yeah. Because then all of a sudden you're competing on price. Yeah. And you don't have a competitive advantage there. Yeah. No, right. No. It's at all. probably not even your market as in Tom. Yeah. Some of the places you probably go to. Yeah. And therefore I've learned this the hard way. If I'm not my my own customer, it's probably not a good yeah. idea. Yeah. I know, I, you know what I mean? I totally agree with that. You're playing at someone else's yeah. playground. Yeah. And you're going to sink because yeah. deals and pricing is going to kill yeah. you. You'll have to keep kind of going to the lowest common denominator. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So does it get lonely? Because anyone starting a company, I know this from my own experience with The Lighthouse, it's hard. And I have a, a, a co-founder and it's still hard and it still gets lonely. So you are now a sort of a solo entrepreneur. I mean, of course you have backers and, and, and partners and so on. But really, it rests on your shoulders. Yeah. Does it get lonely? And what do you do about it? Are you, do you have a peer group? Do you have like a therapist on demand? I mean, what, <laughs> what's, what's the trick? I think the trick is I got very lucky. I had great, I have great partners. Mm. Simple as that. My, yeah. my partners are amazing. Um, they, I, I see them every day. Mm. Um, they are my sounding board. Okay. We work together extremely well and we share a common vision. Okay. So, so they're involved in the day to day. Um, yeah, I would say like, not, I mean, not in, in the, the operational, of, yeah, but in no, sense but, of but in terms having of, a conversation yeah, with them. Yeah, of course. Yeah. They're, they're available 24 seven. Okay. You know, that is incredibly important, especially when you, when you were dealing with large amounts of money, yes. um, huge investments into these, into these venues. Um, I'm have to, I'm the one who makes the decisions, yes. like, but I need them there to guys what do you reckon like yeah of course like what do you think of this like is this is not crazy right yeah, yeah. okay it's yeah, reasonable yeah, yeah. yeah okay yeah. good all right keep going you know like yeah. when uh when things are not going well um or or if you you know if you're, you're down on a budget or something like that it's like you know they they expect you to work damn hard you know yeah you're, essentially you're a i'm an md or a ceo of a business yes 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 it's uh it's responsibility it's, it's, yeah to I, make I, it work you know, if, if it's if i'm not the guy then who is so yes. uh, you know the, the pressure is on me all the time to make well, that's sure what that's, i meant uh, so yeah, that yeah. pressure is hard yeah are you able to how do you shake it off and are you able to get home and you have four children yeah um, yeah. you know, I mean, I know because I've, 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 I can relate to this and you don't want to go home and whether it's your wife or your children, depending on their age to also offload, right? That's yeah. not fun either. Yeah. yeah. So, so how do you manage that? Yeah, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's, it's pretty tough. Um, yeah, I, it is. I, um, I don't really, I, I try to switch off mm. but it's very difficult because yeah. my phone is going yeah. All day. Yeah. The business is literally 24 hours, you know, with, with, you know, you know, late night at the guild and the bakery business and you know different venues closing at different times and um so you always have to be on um i'm probably i'm trying to get better at it i'm trying to take more time for health and fitness and um you know as i told you before i've stopped drinking alcohol yeah 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 you I made life lifestyle, lifestyle yeah. changes yeah I, I i knew that a year ago i had it's uh, very two wise. years ago i had to make i had to make lifestyle changes because i knew what was coming yeah you so can't like, do 10 venues and be yeah. out at night and it sort of feels like this is my shot like every, you know, if if you if you're at a yeah, in yeah. the cusp of like a big growth phase and you get like it's sort of feels like an athlete it training up, for the yeah. Olympics, right? If you screw it up, you're gone. Yeah, yeah. So you get one shot. It's very wise. You got to go hard. So yeah, I made some some pretty big choices to make sure that you know my kids get enough attention because if you know I, I can't be uh, not present people or, or 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 drinking alcohol or or not be with them. I, like it's it's easy be with them or or, or go to you know a pub some night out yeah. or whatever with my friends or you know so. I'm still social, of course, but um, yeah, it's. Uh, I realize also that, you know, alcohol. I think um, and the consumption of it, doing a job like I do and Impossible. you do, Impossible. It, inc it increases anxiety. One hundred percent. The the whole feeling of not being totally on increased my anxiety more than it did if I was if I was not. You and, know? and you know, so, the interesting part about that is that people are reluctant to talk about it, like. Mm -hmm. No one, because it's such a social thing, yeah. no one wants to go and say it actually really affects your, I mean, performance, decision-making, yeah. anxiety levels. Yeah. Um, I wish people would talk more about it. There's a couple of people like uh, Fudiva now and others that are kind of yeah. went public about abstinence and so on. I think that's great. Yeah. People should make their own choices. I'm not in any way condemning people going out and having a good time, but I'm saying 
people need to understand that there's a cost. Yeah, of course. If you want to work at this high level. Yeah. No, you yeah. may choose like I don't want to yeah. be Tom and I don't yeah. want to have 10 venues yeah. in a year. That's yeah. fine too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So yeah, it's 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 it was a personal decision. I, you know, I, I don't often talk about it to be no, honest. No, no, I know. But, um, I know. Yeah, it's I think uh, it's a great decision. Yeah. Remarkable decision is not easy to do. Yeah. Were you able to um socially did you get a lot of blowback? Yeah. I think the first few months, yeah. Okay. But then your friends get used to it and it's yeah. like, it's fine, you know? Yeah. So, um, but no, it's, uh, they understand also what I've tried to take on. And you would just tell them like, you like, look, guys, I'm going to go out, but I don't drink. I used to, uh, but now I don't. No, I just, no, it's I just, so, it's I just don't. You. Or if someone asked me, yeah, I'd say, I just don't. Uh, no, I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, have a big, you know, big, big day tomorrow, you know? Yeah, or, yeah, you know, yeah, I can yeah. put my kids to bed, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dog, take the dog for a walk. Or, yeah. yeah. So we talked a little bit about anxiety because I think it's such an important part. And I feel like especially the men are very reluctant to talk about it. And I talk about it on the show quite often, to be honest, because so one, there's obviously kind of the lifestyle changes you've made to keep your anxiety low. Um, how do you generally deal with, with those type of, type of mental health? Because um, like we said, it's lonely. <laughs> the buck stops with you. And there's immense pressure because of the constant deadlines in timelines and we're blessed we were seeing this earlier both of us to be in dubai mm. that is such a high functioning super efficient city but still mm. you have a job to do mm. and people depend on you so so is there anything else that you do to try to kind of keep your mental health in top tip top shape i try to remember often that this is probably the greatest experience of my life okay that's great that's a form of gra that's like a gratitude yeah, journal in many ways with like a bit like I'm happy. A lot of pride. I know I like I know I love it. I know I'm enjoying it. So just chill and like just just take it as it comes. Be slow, make decisions, but don't stress too much, you know. What do you think drives all of this? Is it like uh, when I was talking to Natasha, I mean, she's incredibly ambitious and yeah. puts it out there and I love that. Yeah. Because especially with women, they tend to be a bit relax reluctant, right? Yeah. Cuz they, they they worry that it comes out the wrong way. What is it for you? Is it curiosity? Is it broad ambition? Is it you want to be, you know, at the epicenter of the world? I mean, what what drives this every day? <laughs> this level of, frankly, ambition and drive. Yeah. I mean, so you're doing a lot. I think I'm really curious about what's possible. Mm. I, I like, I love, I love the restaurants. Like, I love. Yeah, them. I can like, see that. That's like obvious. The, like, you know, I love, um, I love the creation of them and yeah. the process of creating something new. Yeah, that I think is addictive. Yeah. is to create something new and then to watch people enjoy it. And, and your artistic creative side yeah. is very yeah. obvious. Uh, so, it shows. Yeah. So I, your I, shoes are also great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so are yours, <laughs> by the way. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, that, that to me is like what gives me a lot of satisfaction. Um, so yeah, does that answer that? I, I, yeah, I it does. Yeah, it yeah. does. I'm yeah. just mm. like, I guess maybe another way to ask the same question is, did it start, like, did you, were you always this ambitious and driven or did this start with this mission when you started to want surge and then realize the possibilities of what you can do. And again, Dubai helps, right? We had a, the current push. Yeah. But yeah. were you always like from a young child knowing like one day I want to really be like... No, I don't think so. No. No. You were just a regular dude yeah. hanging out. Yeah, I think I was a surfer Australia. and, you know, like yeah. a skateboard and, you know, <laughs> okay. like... You know, like any it? other Australian. Yeah, you know, like I, I don't think so. Okay. When I became a chef though, I, I, I the thrill of working in a fine dining kitchen... Gave you a lot that, of that is like the best in Australia, which was when I was when I was there. That was thrilling, and the feel the feeling of succeeding at something, that, like in the chef world, was really great. Like, I, so I I sort of take it back to that time because that was also very difficult. So that was probably physically that was the most difficult time in my life because it's physically demanding work. Draining, yeah. So sure. um, coming out of that the other side and feeling strong and confident. That's the, I love that feeling. So I think like every time we have a new venue that's successful, the, the feeling of it is, is it, it fills you with confidence. If you see people interacting with it and they like it, that's great. You know, you're onto something good. Where do you want to take this? Like, are you going to build another 10 venues every year? Or are you, <laughs> do, I mean, is there, I mean, because again, you know, we all have, I mean, I'm the same, right? We, like when I started the Lighthouse, it was self-funded, but I also now have external investors mm. and they expect a return on their capital. And I want to bring this up because a lot of people think that people like you and I, it's fun and games. It's not. I mean, there's expectations and it's a business and people expect to make a return of their investment. So where do you see this? Is it just 
more and more would you see uh, uh, ability to maybe sell the business like Zoom I did or something at some point when you reach certain scale? What is for you the way you think about the business going forward? Or have you not? It's okay to say. To, to be honest, uh, like I've been so busy building yeah. and creating yeah. what's in front of me. Thinking about anything beyond that is like, hard. Yeah. Like my whole thing, and, and my partners know this, is that we've sort of tried to intend on building things that we know will be international. Okay. So, so there is that opportunity. Theoretically, you know, we you can go out up, broad. Yeah. We could pick up the entirety of Etex and drop it in any other cosmopolitan city around the world. And technically it should work. Would that be more like uh, a European, a Western city or like a regional, like a Saudi or yeah, I, I, whichever? I, I, I think, you know, from what I can see what that's happening in Saudi is it's becoming much more, you know, cosmopolitan and, For and sure. a big mix of people there. So all of our brands would fit really do 100%. or should feed that community. So it's going back to the daily routine thing. Like no matter what we do, Dubai is actually very similar to Melbourne in terms of the population, you yeah. know, the, the demographic of people, spending power in terms of you know people love coffee, they love yeah. Asian food, they love yeah. steak, there's a they beach, love, you know, like they, yeah, there's uh, yeah. all these things. Yeah. So yeah, it's I, I would love at some point to pick it up, all of it. And put it in different places. But okay, we'll take you to Riyadh. That's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but let's see. You know, it's that's that's a long way away. The, yeah. the next year is going to be a great year of fine tuning. I think. Okay. Yeah. Long term, I mean, is Dubai your home, or you see yourself? That's it. Like you know, you're here forever. Or I mean, we don't we don't know, of course. Or because many people, at least back in the day, maybe that's changed now, used to come to Dubai with this intention that, oh, it's probably a few years and I'm going to go back to, you know, put X, in your yeah. case, Australia. Yeah. How do, you, how do you think about Dubai? Is that home? Is that it? Yeah. It's it is. Okay. Yeah, we, 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 we love the place. My yeah. kids were born here. Yeah. Um, you know, we've been here for 13 years now, yeah. uh, almost 14 years, 14 years, I, I should say. And, um, you know, our, we've built a life here. Australia is very different. Yes, to, I, know. I, I think we're all probably you know here for that. You know, it's addictive. The city yeah, is ambitious and it's it's yeah. engaging. And cosmopolitan. It's, it's there's open. something for everybody. Yeah, I love Australia, and I, I I will go back there to go surfing and you know. <laughs> but I I don't think it would be right to pick up my kids and go and stick them there and give them a brand new life there. I I, I don't I think this is the best place in the world right now. Yeah, that's yeah. You know, I, why, I I, I agree with leave. you. Do they <laughs> identify as? Dubai kids, or do they identify as Australian, or do they identify as Russian, or do they identify as confused? <laughs> I mean, I'm asking this because yeah. I mean, I have two kids. My wife is Saudi. I'm Egyptian. We've lived here also like 15 years, and I can tell you they are a little bit of all of that. Yeah, uh, but they they there's a Dubai kid factor there. Yeah, that's come up yeah. with all of these kids. Yeah, they've got that certain accent, don't they? Yeah, they do <laughs> yeah. have this like <laughs> yeah, strange <laughs> non-accent yeah, accent. Yeah. You know, yeah. with us, like you yeah. can still say like this guy's from there. Yeah, uh, and 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 they all have, and it's a, such a thing because everybody around them in their school is half something. Yeah. And yeah. growing up in Egypt, it was much more homogenous. I mean, I was in a German school, but everybody that was half was half German or Swiss. There was yeah. no like Australian and Russian and French. Yeah, and, yeah. So how do, I mean, I know your kids are quite young, but how do you feel they define themselves? I I, 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 I think they like to say that they're Dubai kids, to be okay. honest with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like they, they, they all like to say that. Um, yeah, the, they the, do. The, the young kids, like they're proud of the fact they that are they are born proud. here. Um, yeah, but they've got like that sort of, slight australian british american <laughs> twang that you cannot describe yeah, yeah. it's like what the hell are they talking you know yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's quite funny yeah it yeah. is funny and um how do you keep up with four kids is uh, there a routine yeah. with the children outside of work yeah um like weekend routine or something like that yeah, are you able to switch um, off yeah I, I you know i i saturday mornings is my my real quality time with them i take them to their sport activities saturday mornings you know seven you know six thirty seven o'clock making breakfast, you know, then we go out to some of the venues, go to Byron Bathers Club, which is literally built for families, you know, for, you know, families like mine and yours to, yeah. you know, take our kids yeah. on the weekend. And yeah. so, yeah, I try, I try and spend a lot of time with them, you know, outside of the real peak hours of the business. Um, but um, yeah, I, I'm hoping that next year I can get a bit more time to really spend quality time with them. So what did your, uh, did your, what did your, your parents do growing up for you? Um, what were they working? I'm just curious. I'm going to ask a question. Yeah, but... yeah, no, sure. My, my mother was a school teacher. Okay. Um, my father um, was in um, property valuation. The reason I'm asking is 
the kids having their father being an entrepreneur, I think is a very unique experience. Mm. My parents were professors, teachers as well. So yeah. both were teaching at university. And so I did not have any entrepreneurship as such in my family. Yeah. And I had uh, for the longest time in banking, I was in banking for 15 years, a, a corporate job like yeah. everyone else. So I noticed that the kids growing up with uh, a father that's, or a mother in many cases, of course, that's an entrepreneur that doesn't have a set job, that doesn't wear a set you know, um, suit or whatever it is, it's a very different experience. Yeah. Do you feel that? Yeah. Um, Maybe my, they're a bit young. My, my father was an entrepreneur as well. Okay. So he, he had a property valuation company. Ah, it was his company. Um, okay. Yeah, it was his company. Okay, so you, so, you yeah. actually, you so actually I, have I was, that experience. I sort of grew up with him driving around in the car, him okay. taking calls and okay. understanding what it took to be able to do that. So this is not unusual for you. That's what yeah, I'm trying to say. Yeah, and well, he, he always instilled in me the, the, you know, the confidence of just saying, he used to tell me, go the hack. Which I don't even know if it's an Australian, so or he made it up, but it meant <laughs> just go for it; it'll be fine. Yeah. Just try. Okay, but that explains so, a lot. Yeah, so you yeah. have this; you had this already in yeah. you. I think. I think it that literally that line really is in, is in my head often. Just have a go; you'll figure it out. Are you telling it to your children? I do tell them that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I have found that if you have a parent that is an entrepreneur um, or had his own business, at least that is. It doesn't daunt you as much. Yeah. For me, one of the daunting things was that just, you know, I grew up in a house where people left in the morning to go. Yeah. So that kind of unstructured lifestyle that comes with entrepreneurship took me a while to adjust. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not a given. Yeah. And you have but, to think about it. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's, it's one, of the, one of the perks of the job is yes. that it's not specifically you have to be in the office at this time. You have to leave at this time. Like, it's fr it feels free. It's like, it's, it's, a, I, I, that's the way I feel about it is it's, you, you have to manage your time, manage the business well, but you can, but that means you can also manage your family time better. And it's, it's all up to you. Yes. You know? Yes. I like that idea of that freedom. I agree with you. I, yeah. I think that's, that's probably the perk, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So but it as, comes with these challenges though. <laughs> no, hundred yeah. percent. But yeah. I think the perk is that if you want, yeah. you can come today, spend an hour or whatever, you know, on a podcast. Yeah. And not worry about, oh, like I have to be here, I have to yeah. be there. You, you can make yeah. that time. Yeah. You and just have to great. be very, very organized about it. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. One final question, Tom. Are you documenting this incredible journey in some shape or form? Like, I feel like not only have you built an amazing business over the last 10 years, but also your business grew while Dubai was growing. So it's actually kind of a yeah. documentation of your business, but also documentation of Dubai's amazing growth yeah, yeah are you documenting this in any way uh probably not enough to be honest with you yeah, th through, you should through yeah i think i think it's um as i have more time next year to focus on yeah. you know um you know marketing for example yeah. and, and creating content i think that's that yeah and, and even focus, if you have yeah. some scraps from yeah. the early days yeah or a letter here yeah, or yeah. a piece of paper yeah, yeah. i think that all becomes I, yeah. I have learned over the years that is invaluable yeah, I, I do have all that stuff. It's just Somewhere. bringing it together. Yeah, that but might take a while. But yeah, it's, it's there. there. Yeah, yeah. And I also think it um, becomes very valuable as your kids grow up for them to try to understand you better. Yeah, because true. Th you're gonna tell them a story, but I think they will have their own story. Yeah, right yeah, about true. you. You know, so they'll hear dad is saying, "Okay, great," but then they'll be like, "Well, let me find out for myself." Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Um, well, that's like stuff like this helps, right? Yes, like, you know, podcast one hundred percent. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I spoke to Shirag, you know, years ago now. So we, we that was a great podcast in Brunswick. I think we did it right. Yeah, this so. is the most Shirag has has smiled in years. So, <laughs> great, we'll bring you in every week. Yeah, yeah. No, it's very true. I mean, like I was telling you earlier. I mean, this podcast that is really the main purpose, right? It's chronicling in these journeys of entrepreneurs across the city. A it shows not just the city, a whole region, frankly. A people want to hear it too. I want people to understand that those perks of having those beautiful restaurants yeah. comes at a price. It doesn't mean don't do it. Yeah. It just means it's a lot of yeah. hard work yeah. and dedication yeah. and planning. Uh, and I think the more people understand that and are a bit more mentally prepared for entrepreneurship, the more you see. I mean, when you opened, this was very, very, very new. And I was telling you, I remember being, wow. I mean, you, Tasha's had just started, Joey had just was about open the main a year or two later. And when we yeah. started the lighthouse, I still remember it was maybe a handful of homegrown brands. Yeah. Look yeah. at Dubai today. Yeah. It's incredible. I mean, there's a new brand on every corner. Yeah. And and all stories like yours and mine. Yeah. Essentially. City's amazing. 
Well, thank you very much. Congratulations on uh, your big moves. Wish you all the best, and we'll be we'll be watching. We'll bring you back when you're at uh, fifty. <laughs> Thanks, <Ashley. laughs> very I soon. Appreciate Probably it. six months. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. If you enjoyed this episode, you'll like my conversation with Ayman Bey, who's responsible for changing the fine dining culture in Egypt. You can find this episode in your podcast app, and there's a link in our show notes as well. We also have a bonus episode with Tom talking about pivoting the concept behind the guild, his 20,000 square feet space in Dubai during the pandemic. The Lighthouse Conversations is hosted by me, Hesha Montasser, and produced by Chirag Desai. You can connect with us on Instagram at the Lighthouse underscore podcast for behind the scenes videos and more. And also listen to any of our previous episodes in your podcast app and at the lighthouse.ee slash podcast. We'll see you again in two weeks.